Keen and welcome to Peachy Keen. Today I want to introduce our dog Bridie to this channel as well as talk about how we introduced Bridie to our son Leon. So when Andy and I bought our home together we both came from homes that had dogs. We both were living with our parents before we moved in together and both our parents had our family dogs still with them. We both are enormous animal lovers. So when we moved in right from the get-go, we felt like something was missing in our house. So we decided to adopt a dog. Someday I think I'll talk about our adoption day because that's a long story and it was pretty funny, but we came home that day with our amazing dog, Bridie. She was a puppy. She was adopted from a no-kill shelter and she was only probably less than eight weeks old. Um, and we love her so much. We got her the year we were getting married. And so her name, Bridie, it's B-R-I-D-I-E. And it's kind of a play on words because I was a bride that year and Bridie. And we wanted a dog's name to start with the letter B. Um, and then that name, I'm Irish. And that's an Irish name. It means little Bridget. We just both really liked the Bridie name. And that's who she was. She wasn't named until we brought her home and that was that. So it was just the two of us and Bridie for five years before we had our son Leon. So Bridie was our dogger is what we called her. Um, she's everything to us. She was there for us through a lot of rough times and a lot of happy times. She was the best thing for us. We were obsessed with her. We always talk about her. I have an Instagram account just for her. I'll link that down below. I haven't been on there as much lately I should. Poor Bridie. <laughs> but she's just our little baby girl and she's a total daddy's girl. So when we found out we were pregnant um, a little over a year ago, one of our first things we thought about was how is Bridie going to react? How are we going to make the introduction of the baby and Bridie? So that was really important to me and I did a lot of research ahead of time. Um, to make sure it was a super smooth transition and not a shocker for anybody. So the first thing we started to do while I was pregnant was when we were starting to bring baby things into the home and transition our what now is nursery from an office to a nursery. So Bridie is allowed everywhere in our house. She's allowed on our furniture. She sleeps with us in bed overnight. She's allowed on our couches, whatever. So we wanted to make sure she would understand like this room is going through a change. This was the office. She loved laying under the desk all the time in there. And she felt like that was just her little room. She'd go and hang out in there sometimes. And so we kind of slowly started bringing baby things in there and kind of putting them all over the floor and letting her walk up and and sniff them and things like that. And then when we finally created the nursery and took everything out and moved our office and made that into the nursery, we let her explore that area for a little while. We definitely think that she kind of marked her territory because like one of the first nights that we had the baby furniture in there, she totally went and left a little gift on the floor. But thankfully that hasn't happened again. We kind of, you know, we scolded her and made sure she knew that that was a bad thing to do and she can't do that. But that part was the first part of the transition for her. So then slowly we would bring in more baby things. I started to um, go on YouTube and play videos of babies crying and she really wasn't affected by that. She was like, okay, whatever. It's new noise, no big deal. She's a pretty chill dog and so we weren't too worried about that. But the number one thing was the meeting for the first time. So I was very picky about this. I actually had binders of instructions for both of our parents because I actually had an induction date for Leon but I didn't make it to that. I ended up I was supposed to be induced like five days after my due date and they totally thought I'd be super overdue and I ended, up, I ended up going into labor the day after my due date. But anyway, I had plans for whatever. I had a binder for option A and a binder for option B and both of our parents had instructions. So what we ended up doing was we drove Bridie to my in-laws on the way to the hospital while I was in kind of early labor still. And so Bridie had a slumber party there for a few nights at my in-laws house. And so while we were at the hospital, I had a special hat just for Bridie. Like I had purchased it just for that. It was this cotton hat. And the day Leon was born, I had him lay on it. And it was 
I had I put it on him and it was in his bassinet and we kind of rubbed it on him and then I had a little Ziploc bag and I sent it home with my in-laws the day Leon was born. So literally the day he was born, he spent a few hours having a, that on him and then that evening that item went home and my in-laws took it out of the plastic bag and gave it to Bridie and she sniffed it and she kind of rubbed on it. And that was kind of their first little introduction of what is this smell? I'm going to have to get used to this smell. So then when we actually came home from the hospital, I was really picky about this too. I had my in-laws come to our house and drop Bridie off, but then leave. I didn't want anyone else home. I didn't want any other distractions. I wanted Bridie here by herself. And when we came home from the hospital, we pulled in the garage and I stayed in the car and Andy went inside first. And Andy, by the way, while I was in the hospital, he did go over to my in-law's house when he was like running some errands while I was still in the hospital. Um, and so he saw her and she smelled him. And I think that helped because he, she was like, okay, like one parent is here. I know something's going on. Cause she definitely knew something was going on. Andy got out of the car and went inside and said hello and brought her outside to go P-O-T-T-Y. She's actually sitting right here, so I can't say that word because she'll be like, oh, okay. <laughs> so P-O-T-T-Y, you get what I'm saying. And he took her there to do that business. And then once she was kind of calmed down, she's like, okay, daddy's home. This is cool. Okay. Uh, Andy came outside and switched with me. So he sat with the baby and I came inside and Bridie's smelling me because I smell different and oh my gosh and what is this and hi mom and she sniffed and cuddled with me a little bit and then we had Andy bring the baby in so we had the baby in the car seat I should have filmed this I was in the complete new mom fog I don't even know how I existed for those first few weeks but we brought Leon in, in the car seat he was fast asleep and we put him on the floor with us right there too and let Bridie go up and sniff him. So she just walked right up and stuck her little nose in and sniffed him. And she was like, okay, <laughs> like she didn't care. So that was it. Um, and that night was the first night he slept in his bassinet right next to our bed where she sleeps. And we weren't sure how Bridie would react to crying in the middle of the night, to pooping, to, you know, accidents, to diaper pails and Honestly, she's been such a good dog with him. She doesn't care. She doesn't react to anything, honestly. She, she, he'll cry and she'll barely even wake up. She's like, meh, it's fine. <laughs> so moving forward from there, Bridie and Leon has, have had a really good relationship. Um, I actually got a photo of what I think was the first time that Leon really realized that Bridie like existed and was like a, like a being. And it was the cutest thing. He was like, whoa, whoa. And he did like a little smile, like, whoa, it was so cute. And he loves her. It, she can do anything. She can bark. She's so loud, by the way. She has the loudest bark. And I honestly think that Leon heard her bark while I was pregnant with him because he never wakes up. He'll never shake. He'll never stir at all. He can sleep completely through her bark. He's not scared by it. But then our neighbor's dog or my sister's dog, if he hears that bark, he'll be like, oh, what was that? So I seriously think that he was just used to her bark since she is so loud. <laughs> and he probably heard that while in the womb. That's at least what I think. Um, but now going forward, Lee, um, Bridie is very interested in him and she'll come up and she'll want to like lick him right in the face. And I'm not really into that. So I'll try to stop it a lot. But he... But he will belly laugh so hard from her. Anything she does, even if she just comes up and barks at him, he thinks it's the funniest. He can be sobbing, having a total meltdown. And if Bridie walks in the room, he'll calm down. And he'll sit up and he'll be like, okay, look, it's Bridie. He loves her. And it's the cutest thing. Andy and I melt all the time. But there's been so many amazing moments like this one. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Go run, go run, go on. Go on. Go on. <laughs> Brady.
goodness. <laughs> Cutest thing ever, right? We were practicing or sitting up with Leon and he just thinks she's the funniest thing playing around. At first she was playing with toys and then running around and he just thinks it's the bee's knees. It's the funniest. So going forward, we do want to be careful about some things. Um, like once Leon really starts to be mobile and be able to pull more, I'm afraid of him like going up and grabbing Bridie too hard and pulling because he's not going to know that that's wrong. And um, also the food situation where when we put Bridie's food down, she's pretty good, but she can be slightly territorial. Like she'll eat really, really fast and do like a back up. She's never growled or snapped, but still um, we will want to be really cautious about food time um, with Bridie and Leon and make sure he's just not in a situation where he would crawl up to her food bowl or come too close to her when she's eating because that's leave Bridie alone time. Because at the end of the day, um, as much as you love her, as much as she's part of our family, she is a dog. She's an animal. She's not a human. And we want to try our absolute best to make sure there's never a situation where she could accidentally hurt him. Because I know at the end of the day, of course, she doesn't mean to do that. But that is her way of communicating. And she can't sit there and say, hey, mom, dad, he's making me uncomfortable because she's a dog. So if anyone out there has any good tips about toddlers and, and puppies, or if you want to talk about your cat and how you introduce them to your kids, let me know um, down below. I think it's really interesting at how kids form relationships with animals when they grow up. And I'm really excited to see how Leon grows up with Bridie. I'm really excited for that. So it'll be a lot of fun, even though they're almost six years apart, which is really sad to me. But She's a Jack Russell mix, and so I hope that she is a long time left in her. Um, while I'm sitting here talking so much about Bridie, we might as well meet her, right? She's actually cuddled right at the end of the bed, so let me grab her. This is Bridie. <laughs> She's, like, not a mute. She's like, my mom's sleeping. <laughs> this is our bugs. Many a name, many a nickname. Our booger wooger, our pooper scooper. But this is Bridie. She's six years old. She's like a Jack Russell rat terrier mix. We're not totally sure. We love her so much. Um, she's like wire hair, but she sheds a ton. <laughs> but at least it's not long hair. Um, but she's really the best. Thank you so much. I'm going to feed you. Ooh, did you just burp? You did. <laughs> but she's really been a, the best big sister ever. She's a good girl. Good girl, Freddy. You want to say hi? Oh, your stomach is growling. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Join next Friday for my weekly Friday videos for this year, my own little personal goal. This is Peachy Keen. Thanks so much. Bye.